we're seeing the healer puppet being used so much. It is crazy. Why are so many of the pro players switching over to Healer Puppet and not using Frozen Arrow? Today is elimination for either Tribe Gaming or Marcos Esports in the FCL playoffs. Let's dive in. Nebrox kicking us off today. And on top of that, we are going to be seeing two different wars today. In about 15 minutes, a war between VM Legacy and Milliseam MG is also playing and that is going to be in this video as well we're going to catch the end of that of that war there so we're going to see the end of both of the wars and they're in the very similar situation in the lower bracket just on opposite sides of the lower bracket i'll show you that in just a moment as well but let's dive in let's see what Nebrox can do as he dives that blip across the base there just broadsiding with the electro dragons you know that he's uh one of the best d drag attackers in the world and i don't know how he does so much better with d drags than like everybody else there i don't know what he does differently than everybody else but for whatever reason he ends up overkilling these bases like crazy. He always goes first for Tribe Gaming. And his goal is to try to keep the attack times down at the very, very beginning of the war. It's part of Tribe's greater strategy to make sure that they, if they do end up going to a double perfect war, that they have time advantage. So they go for fast, fast, fast attacks at the very start of the war. And they triple consistently. I'll show you the war log in just a minute to show you exactly what I'm talking about. But Nebrox looking very, very good at this one. Just completely leveling that base with E-Drax faster than any of the other spam style of attacks could end up getting done. Like, you look at all the Root Rider attacks right now, and we know that they're powerful. But to be able to be this consistent with E-Drax and that fast as well, you know that they have something special going on. But look at the Warlog here, guys. Look at this Warlog. 14, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. This is Tribe Game we're talking about. And they do not mess around. And and they triple a lot and they triple fast. Campbell G will start us off here for Marcos Esports. He's going to break out the Root Riders and it's going to be a Queen Charge, which is going to end up being a little bit slower than what we saw in a Tribe. And I really feel like that if you are playing against Tribe and with a track record the Tribe has, you just kind of have to throw some caution to the wind and make your attacks fast. And the choice to do a Queen Charge into Root Riders is going to be a slower option. But a nice invisibility there. Get the queen to redirect into the core of the base. And we'll see how quickly he can get this base down. And that's assuming that he's able to triple it. Like, we, we hope that they can just keep on tripling it. And we can see a double perfect war. That's the ideal scenario. That's why we jump into matches. So we see big name teams like this going against each other. When you see one of the top teams out of Europe. Out of the top team out of India. You know that you're in for a good match. But pushing forward here with that frozen arrow. Level 18 on that. Max out. Giant Gauntlet. Run the Healing Tome. And here we go with the Rubrides going through the Town Hall. Queen does have a very good path right now. Like, the wall price that he's able to get for her are going to give her access into all the heavy defenses of the core. And the Rubrides got going at a pretty decent pace here. Like, I feel like he's doing everything right in this attack here. But it always just feels like when you're playing against Tribe Gaming that you just have to pick up the pace because Tribe doesn't mess around like we talked about and that's their entire strategy they don't just go out there and try to get the perfect war they try to get the perfect war as quickly as possible that makes them one of the most difficult teams to beat in all of Clash of Clans esports right now but right now he's got that queen still moving to the core of the base there Flameflinger giving her support on the flank there pops the queen ability could have burned an extra rage right there, but maybe he wants extra spells for the left side of the base there. Notice how he puts the skeleton spell out of the minimum range of the scatter shot there, but also distracting the queen at the same time. So, good value out of that. Locks out of the defensive queen. Quickly takes her down. Needs to get the cleanup at the top of the base there to make sure he doesn't leave any buildings behind. He's got wizards following up, though. He's got the cleanup taken care of, and it is pretty fast here. Like, honestly, for a queen charge root rider attack, he'll swag a freeze, and he will get it done here at a minute... Excuse me, uh, 45 seconds to spare on the clock. Skelly Donut and Zap Lalo are Rikiris' two favorite attacks, and both of them have already proven to be very, very fast. So start off with the Skelly Donut, invest the time early, and then we get the heroes and the Lalo moving at the same time. But easily picks up three major targets right there. Multi Inferno, Monolith, and Clan Castle. And now we make a report here with the heroes. King diving towards the town hall. You got him to go to the left there. Make it so that he can cut off his pathing with the queen and then pop his ability to go in there and get the town hall down. That's the goal here. Unfortunately, the king is not participating in that goal. 
And he's taking off in the wrong direction. Okay, well, that's a problem. It's a problem. It's nothing that he can't adjust for. But it is something he will have to handle right now. The queen will get the king out in front tanking. She'll go invisible. And the king will end up dying out over there. Definitely would have preferred that he would have went into the town hall to go get the first star secured. But he does run a healer puppet here. Level 17 on the healer puppet. Interesting. Interesting choice there. Level 27 on the giant gauntlet. Didn't get a lot of value out of the gauntlet, but did get the defensive queen out of the way. But look at this. <laughs> All right, queen. All right, queen's just going to trade places with the king. That's fine. He'll need a scatter shot, but I'd much rather having... I'd much rather have a scatter shot still up there to deal with than having the town hall up to deal with. But a quick adjustment there, and he's able to power through with the healers that he spawned. But down south, down, down comes a stone slammer. And he'll run a life gem with his Lala, which is pretty standard here. He needs to get the world champion to pick up these internal defenses that the balloons are getting pushed away from by the sweeper. So he got the multi inferno down, leaving up a couple of the other buildings there. But the queen's still working in that area. The queen's gonna handle that expo and the battle builders in that area. So he's got that under control, but it is costing him some time here. There were a couple of things that slowed him up a bit. Multi inferno is claiming a lot of targets right now. He's losing some balloons pretty rapidly, but he spreads the balloons out into the back side of the base. Making sure that the scatter shot can only hit one or two of them at a time. Making sure that he gives as much protection for those blues as possible. At the same time, protecting the main pack coming from the other direction. And one more blue over to the Wizard Tower as well. And that'll save him some time right there as well. So, not leaving anything behind. Quickly get through the final little bit of cleanup. And it is a triple four tribe gaming. And that one just about matches the one from Marco's Esports. Keep the speed up here. Here comes a bunch of rocket blues into the bottom base here as he sends in a blimp to go in. And set up with a Super Archer Bomb. Pretty easy, accessible area in that left side. But, okay, all right, all right. Where, where are these uh, archers going? Bunch of archers ran off there chasing some ice golems. Immediately left, but he's got the clones. And that should give him enough firepower in the area to still get all of his primary targets. That uh, single Inferno would be the next biggest target here. But if he get that Rage Tower out of the way, that'd be also a big deal right here. But if he gets the single Inferno, then he can charge the other side of the base first. Did he get both of them? Neither of them? Okay, he gets the single Inferno, so that's fine. Get the Wizard Tower as well before these clones fade, and he will charge into the Rage Tower area first. It would have been really, really nice to get that to trigger, at least. Even if it didn't go down. But now, got a very heavy top side of the base with a minute used on that Super Archer Bomb. Pretty heavy time investment there. But, should be alright. Should be alright. Maybe they can trust in their defenses as well. I'm not sure who the current base building team is for Marcos Esports. But maybe they have the bases that could potentially stop Tribe and stop them from going to a perfect as well. Hard to say. This Tribe Gaming also has an insane base building team, so... We always have to take that for account as well, because as much as Tribe Gaming consistently puts up perfect wars, nobody really returns the favor. In fact, I don't, I don't think we saw a single perfect war that was dealt against them in their entire war log. So they're not just good on offense, they're good on defense as well. And so maybe Marcos Esports is just going to slow play here and run a little bit slower attacks, even though this is pretty fast. This is pretty fast here, but I, I do have to wonder if they will take their time a little bit more there just to make sure they get triples before they try to rush things. And that's going to potentially just kind of play right into Tribe Gaming's strategy with their skill on top of that. But so far, this one is moving pretty quickly here, but it is gonna take a little while to get through this last little area. King's still working, RC's making her way in. Warden is transferred off of the top there. He'll get the last building down at the same time the buildings go down, down south here. And so he's gonna finish it with about 35 seconds to spare. Let's check the average attack time after our second exchange, and let's see where we sit. Currently, Tribe Gaming is already almost ahead by a full minute. So now Tribe Gaming has the freedom to slow things down if they want to. And we have seen them slow down a little bit towards the end of the war. They let their fastest attackers play first. And then they let their clutch players finish towards the end. Let them have the more difficult bases. Let the fast attackers have first pick of bases and let them go earlier in the war. And their strategy tends to work out very, very well for them. And I, I have to wonder how they even end up in the lower bracket in the first place. I saw that they had like one loss on their record in the, like the last couple of weeks here on their Warlog. And it was against uh, early attacks. I think it was against early attacks. Or I think they also had one against uh, 
They had a draw war at the very, very, very bottom of their war log against, I think it was Imperium Titans. But either way, I don't know who ended up having time on that. I assume Tribe did, right? That'd be that would be reasonable, right? <laughs> With the way they play fast. But I assume that that's how they ended up in the lower bracket in the first place. But it is kind of surprising to see them down here. And by the way, if you didn't see, Navi is getting ready to place uh, against a Red Bull in the upper bracket finals. And there's a lot of big teams in this in this lower bracket that are still fighting for survival down here. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. We'll take a look after this attack here as Exorcist makes his Lalo in for the right side. Queen doing some fantastic work up at the very top of the base. Get it, go ahead and clear that entire compartment. And with the Lalo kind of clumping up here, I'm not a huge fan of how it is moving right now. Kind of slowing down. He doesn't have any rages, has no more freezes, has a defensive world champion down south. Exorcist might be in trouble here. He's got this multi arch tower down south. Got the Flame Finger still moving. Maybe that's the kicker that'll give him what he needs here. But while he's got this multi archer tower fired off to the left there, he does throw in a couple of blues, but the blues quickly go down. RC pops their ability. Throws her shield across the base there. She'll clear it up right there. Okay, you know. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, maybe I misjudged that a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's crushed. That is absolutely crushed. Uh, Exclusive gets it done. Another fast one on the board for Tribe Gaming. Let's take a look at the bracket here so we can see what the path looks like for these teams to be able to make it to the grand finals. So we can see the Tribe Gaming versus Marcos is right here. Their next opponent, the next opponent for whoever wins this match will be our defending world champions formerly class champs now and Arkin. there's still multiple multiple rounds to get through i think eight rounds in a row is what they'd have to win to win the grand finals championship where navi and red bull if they win two in that upper path then they're done i think it's time i think it's time to break out the spam and go for speed all the way across the base here the long push towards the town hall but he'll get that invisibility tower and the model out on the back side of the base and now jark to push his way in he's got one skeleton spell one rage and three freezes to pair with his root riders and valkyries and a long path to make it through but the skeleton spell will try to disable some of these single infernos and by some of them, I mean all of them at the same time, but obviously they don't last for very long right there under that heavy, heavy crossfire. So probably needed additional skeleton spells right there to provide full protection. But the ward ability will give him the protection that he needs. And we'll see what he can do. Make sure to get the... No, he did not get the king inside of the ward ability. So he's all the way off to the far left side of the base. He'll get the defensive or champion down. He's got the frozen arrow onto the queen. And it looks like he's... Oh, he blimps the town hall. He blimps the very, very short approach to the town hall there. But my god, these single infernos. What is happening in the core of the base here? I mean, he lost a lot of root riders and single infernos in the core. Queen is separated from the root riders over to the left there. And I don't I don't know that he got this right now. He lost a lot of troops here very, very early. Tries to freeze over the right there, but the scatter shot hits the headhunters right before the freeze goes down. And that defensive queen is gonna be trouble now. Valkyries over to the left there. Got that uh, battle builder trying to repair the expo. Well, the Valkyries go in there, but that minion working on it. But up top there, the queen and the world champion keep on. Just kidding, no queen. Where'd the queen go? Queen's, queen's gone. Down to the world champion and the warden. Got a couple of miscellaneous troops here, but I, I don't know. I, I think they. They're gonna need a little bit more out of this one. I mean, throw caution to the wind is what I told him to do. To try to keep things up here, but you still got a triple. Okay, it looks like it's already logged above my head of the board there. 92% is the final. And Shiv ends up slipping up here on Marco's esports side. And now time is irrelevant. Would have been really, really helpful if the king would have stayed with the pack here. But apparently, Queen with the Frozen Arrow died through ability which is very, very common with the Frozen Arrow. You have to make sure that you pop those abilities manually on the Queen when you're using Frozen Arrow. Otherwise, that will happen. And that was the second time that that happened during this war. I don't know if that would have made the difference of the attack there, but it ends at a 92%. And now the bar is set for Tribe Gaming. They can keep on tripling, but if they miss, they need to keep the percentage above a 92%. Kronos is in. The Zapper to Lalo, anti two star base. Wrap his heroes around the bottom. Grand Expo is hammering down his queen here pretty hard. You see that he is running Archer Puppet. Not gonna let his queen die through ability. So see what she can do over there. But a skeleton spell comes down for the single Inferno. It's level 27 on the giant gauntlet. 
And running the life gem for the warden. Can so getting targeted by the single for needs to pop his ability soon. Maybe get it down here before it goes full beam. Yep, got it under control. All right, good, good, good. But the Marvel is going to take him out right there. The queen already burned her ability. And the ice golem that she had supporting her is leaving. As ice golems on defense going to stop her up, but that's fine. There's that tornado trap landing at the town hall. Stuck. Catching that blimp. Able to take it down, though. Does make sure that the rage is overlapping where the Yetis land. But also overlapping as much backwards as possible to make sure that the balloons are getting a nice extra boost right there. And he's looking pretty clean here. He's got one more freeze. He's still got a sword champion ability. Did he deploy her yet? I'm looking for her right now. There she is. In the middle. In the middle. She's taking fire from the ricochet cannon to the expo right now. That says air defense can stop it right now. This should go through. It is looking pretty solid. He'll freeze the air defense to save the blues. Let the war champion go down. And the air defense is looking to go down here as the warden and the last couple of blues coast their way into it. So still, even when they have full advantage of the war, they obviously have already planned out their attacks to be fast. And they are sticking to strategies that do tend to be much faster. And a lot of the Lalo strategies tend to be faster than the Root Rider attacks. And that's why I think Tribe Gaming is sticking with these style of attacks. But right now, they're one triple away from another perfect war on the record. So in the VM Legacy and Millicene MG War, it looks like Darkstar just had a 0% zero star disconnect. And so that war is going to be over before we even get there. So scratch the extra addition to this video because plans just changed and now let's just focus in on this one here and most likely we're gonna see a win out of Millicene MG unless they also have a disconnect we'll check at the end here and see if that happens in the other direction but let's see what happens with Mr. Adil going in a little bit of light and he was able to take out the spell tower and the monolith behind the town hall but the battle builds repaired all the extra damage right there but he uses those being out of the way and drives his queen in. There we see. This time we see that frozen arrow. And this time, queen hopefully can survive. Gonna lose the unicorn through the ricochet cannon, which is a little bit unfortunate. But the battle drill working through in that compartment will give him some extra support there. But he lost a unicorn. He will not be able to recover his queen anymore, which is a bit of a problem here. She's still taking damage. It's okay though. Got a lot of root riders gonna give her access through to the core of the base there. So I thought for a minute she'd be trapped there, but the root riders will give her. Well, she needs to advance forward with the pack there after she gets done dealing with the defensive ice golems. But all the troops on the left side of the base there doing good work there. Staying together. I thought he'd end up with a couple splitting off to the far left there. And I'm so I'm kind of surprised that they all stayed together and did split off. And that's a little bit of a problem that he has these extra buildings off on the left side that could cause some pathing issues. But he keeps on charging fearlessly forward. So got one more lighting. I don't know what he has an extra lighting for. And he brings seven and he uh, only needs six. I mean, you know, if you brought seven, he obviously he took out a monolith. And so if he had seven lightning and he just decided not to use one, then he could have taken out a ricochet cannon. Probably the ricochet cannon that got the queen, but he pop stars the ability, does clear out the final defenses on the far left side of the base. And it looks like it is going to go through. So a very, very nice setup. Let's see that lightning back again because I'm kind of confused on what he was doing there. He cast the last lightning onto the storage. But I think he could have made that a lot easier on himself there and protect his queen better if he would have been able to use the lightning to take that down. Looks like he had six. Oh, j just kidding. It wasn't a monolith. The monolith right there. I'm an idiot. All right. Disregard the monolith. <laughs> he used five and he took out the inferno and the spell tower and two of the battle builders. So, yeah, it would have been a much more heavy investment to go for the ricochet cannon. And now the moment of truth. Yo-Yo23 diving in for Tribe Gaming. As he starts it with a bit of lightning, going for the anti-two-star base. He needs to hit a 93% to lock in the win right now. Otherwise, he'll leave the door open. So let's see if he can make his way in here without anything going wrong. Key things that I'll be looking for. One of the biggest things that will impact the outcome of this attack here. Assuming he does everything right will be if the blimp gets caught in a, like a tornado trap and then taken down before it gets to town hall. That's the most likely cause of this one going off the rails and having big problems. But he doesn't wait for the heroes to finish up down south. He goes to the Eagle Artillery. And as soon as that Eagle Artillery is going down, he gets the Lalo moving. He will be able to pop that word ability and he can absorb the Eagle Artillery strikes there with 
The ward ability wall at the same time, protecting the balloons, protecting the headhunters to go out to the defensive queen, and protecting the blimp. It does catch the tornado trap. And now let's see if it actually goes down. Looking like it is not taking the town hall. Okay, he's gonna lose a lot of balloons. That's gonna be a big hit. All right, the thing that needs to go wrong went wrong. He's still okay though. He's got a lot of balloons in every other side of the base. He lost a lot right there, but I think he's still okay. I think he's still okay here. He's got plenty of blue still moving. He turned his queen dive into a into a queen charge, and the queen will stay alive there. Even though he ran the Lalo in a completely different section of the base, he still gets her to survive. And we're seeing the healer puppet being used so much. It is crazy. Why are so many of the pro players switching over to Healer Puppet and not using Frozen Arrow? And especially today, after we saw multiple queens go down through ability while trying to use the Frozen Arrow. So maybe, maybe Frozen Arrow is a mistake. Maybe the Healer Puppet, maybe Picastro's judgment all the weeks ago when we weren't even sure what was going to be happening was correct and the Healer Puppet was the right path all along. But... As you can see, Tribe Gaming has locked in the win, and they will advance to face Anarchia. 24 seconds faster on average for Tribe Gaming. I mean, Marco's Esports, they were booking it. They had some very fast attacks. They put up a very, very respectable average attack time. But Tribe Gaming, when you expand out the 24 seconds times the five attacks, then they just completely put it away. They put it completely out of reach. They're fast, they triple a lot, and they got to the perfect war, and they eliminate Marco's Esports today.